Before is the wife of a former Denton County Council the first African American to take that position. Hello, I am Noah Reed, and these are my questions for Phyllis Bruce. What inspired you to start the Ebony High Stepford group? I guess because of me being a major in high school. I wanted my girls to enjoy the fun of marching and drills and just having a lot of fun. And we would march all over the streets of Denton and we used to march street back to church parking lot <laughs> until we get to do our drill. What was it like growing up? During that time, um, our girls were not able to be cheerleaders or uh, major eds or anything in the public school for me to integrate it. And um, I started a neighborhood girl team. I only started out with my girls, because I have three, and uh, two of their friends. And we were practicing in the street, and some more girls said, well, can we go on you? And, and I said, yes. And so I ended up with about 15 at that time. Um, we didn't have uniforms. I, I made black skirts and white blouses, and they marched in the, uh, at that particular time. I, since they marched, I had more girls. I ended up with 30. So my neighbor and I made their uniforms, and we bought white tennis shoes, and we all got together and made pom-poms to go on their shoes. And we ended the Dirt Parade, and that parade we won uh, most attractive, 
and uh, most of the other cases, we have we got two children. Is there anything you want people to know about you? Um, I don't think I really want people to know about me, but I'm a child guy. And I will do whatever it takes to make the world a better place or make Gimson a better place for, for these young people. I came from Parlor Point, Texas, which is 20 miles east of Denton. Our school, which was Booker T. Washington, went to the ninth grade. And the only high school that was coastal was Fred Moore in Denton, because Denton was the only high school that was for the, where the black could go. All these little towns, Sanger, Crom, Parlor Point, all the little towns around, had to be burst into Fred Moore. We all had to come to Fred Moore. But I really started playing basketball before I finished. So I would always slip down here, come to Fred Moore, and play with the girls down here because they had a team, but they were really not that good. When I graduated from Power Point, Booker T. Washington, in 50, I started going to school there. And then I joined the basketball team. They did not have a captain. They really didn't have no jackets, no nothing. So I asked if I could become the captain. They voted me to be the captain. And we were good. the whole tournament, boys and girls, we won the whole tournament. We didn't leave out of there around about 1.30 or 2 o'clock. And when we got on the other side of White Bur White Spur, which was coming to Denton, we did not know they had siphoned all the gas out of the bus. This white man and one of the boys got off the bus and went back and begged the man to give us some gas. And we got home around about maybe, I guess it must have been around 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. We were going all night long. So that night, was well, nothing we could do but just sit there and talk. Some were sleeping, some were talking. We were all packed on the bus, the boys and girls. We all were on the same bus. And everybody was just laughing and talking about what a good time and not knowing that we had been siphoned out of gas. And then after we realized that that had happened, we thought about, you know, maybe next year we probably going to have to go back the same way. And then from that time on, I went and talked to the principal and told him what ha had happened. And he said, this won't happen again. And then we had all our jackets and everything. And every year we were so good. There were people right here in Denton. Matter of fact, the lady that was one of the people she said every time they say that girls had a game, I told her I got to go. I, I got to go see Mabel Frey. She is so good. Every time we have a game, we had a packed gymnasium. I mean, when I say packed people, packed people from all around came to see us play. I've done so many things. I was in church when I, on the weekend. We had classes and our principal and teachers and things were really, really good. We got to meet, you know, a lot of kids. By them being versed in here, we got to meet other children. I enjoy school. I love school. I had a good life. I can't complain. I really can't.
Miss Rose Chu is the wife of a former Denton County Councilman, the first African American to take that feat, a pastor and a businessman that strived to create change for the Denton community. Can you tell me some impactful things he did as a councilman that helped the communities? Well, one, he was instrumental in getting minorities on committees, the city committees, like housing, the housing authority. He was instrumental in getting minorities on that council. He served for 50 years as a pastor, and he never gave that up. So as a pastor, how did his religion affect his choices as a councilman? He was just for right. He didn't want to see anyone mistreated, and he wanted the best for all races regardless. And how were you able to overcome negative effects that came along and carry on as a family? We Well, he and I were together, and we both kept our eyes on the prize. That's the only thing I can tell you about that. We kept our eyes on Jesus Christ, and whatever we did, we did in the name of the Lord. Do you think the Denton community is stronger now than before? I'm speaking from an African-American perspective. They are not as active as they were during his time. Most of those people have gone on. I think the younger people are looking at it. It's my right to do this. It's my right to do that. And I, 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 and not looking back, seeing what other people are going through. How are you doing during the times of COVID-19? Do you have any advice for the current generation trying to get through the virus? The best thing I can speak of is from my faith. I, I know that we're going to overcome and that we uh, need to adhere to the rules and regulations that have been set by our city, our state, and our nation. And uh, one does not supersede the other. You need to get a little bit of all of it and try and survive during this time. Ms. Dorothy Minter is a longtime Denton County resident and experienced educator. She overcame many hardships that led her to graduating from the University of North Texas and writing a series of children's books. This is her story. And you know, when you look at prejudice, you have to really uh, be strong and you have to be positive. You have to realize what you need to do. You can't, you can't judge or you can't control what other people do. You understand that? That's a good lesson for you young people. You cannot control what other people do, but you can control the way you react to what other people do, and it makes a big difference. Did you notice that I never applied for a single job? Somebody always asked me to take it. Isn't that remarkable? Bottom line is, it's all God. But you know, there's something that we have to do too. I worked hard. They knew that, that if I said I would do something, I would do it, and I would do it to the best of my ability. And I just started writing one day, and I wrote just one more night. After that, I started writing uh, children's stories. I wrote six children's stories, the, the Adventures of Lucy Lou. If you haven't read those books, you need to read them, because they have a lot of food for thought for not only children, but older people, too. But the main thing that all of us need to do is trust God. I haven't lived 87 years for nothing. Hello, this is Rick Logan talking to me. I could not wait to get back to this day. My childhood was so great here in the city. And I knew that if I came back here, that they'd have an opportunity to grow up in a smaller community. So I knew they would be safe. Denton has always been known for not wanting to start riots or have uprising. They knew how to pacify the colored community to a point whereas that there was never any type of rioting or really civil unrest. That period of time, they came and told the community back in 1921 that they had to move. And that's how we moved 
to what we call today Southeast Denton. Can you tell us about the transition from a segregated neighborhood to an integrated neighborhood? We attended uh, Fred Moore School from elementary all the way to high school. And of course that school is in existence today. There was still some problems uh, with name calling for the song period of time. But once those guys got out there and started playing football, things slowly changed to the better. So the transition was what I heard after I left. When I came back, I could see a change in people's hearts when I come back and visit from time to time. I, I heard that you do have a family business that's been in um, in your family for a while. My uncles, my great uncles, they were always involved in something as far as anything from hauling, involved in some lumber work. My uncle was Bill Logan. Uh, Logan. He was he's the proprietor of the shop. He worked there. And later on, he bought the business from the white man, but he still worked there as an employee. And then later on, he, he was able to put his name on the business. So you figure in the early 1950s, it's all been a Logan shoe shop. What is something you want the people to know about you or take away from your experiences? You go and represent not only the, the black community, represent God, represent your family, just do the right thing, you know, it's just right, it's just right. It just turns out right. Now, there are going to be some ups and downs, but that's okay. I mean, life has just been so sweet and so good for us. You have objectives and goals, and you work on those objectives and goals on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis, and treat people the way you want to be treated. It sounds so simple, but it's just still so profound. It just works. County Councilman, the first African American to take that position. A pastor and businessman that strive to create change for the Denton community. My faith was not as strong when we first got married. And I did not understand the goings and people calling all the time. The phone, Our phone was ringing constantly. And I did not understand that at first. I read a book. It's about being a pastor's wife. And uh, that helped me to let me know that he was not only my husband, but he was a servant of God. He didn't right. want to see anyone mistreated. And he wanted the best for all races, regardless. Well, he and I were together, and we both kept our eyes on the prize. We kept our eyes on Jesus Christ. And whatever we did, we did in the name of the Lord. Did you go to the St. Andrews Church? Yeah, I was tell me all the kind of the stories that happened when they were building the same angel to the God in Christ. They were devout members and he was not friendless. And um, he said that they would be building the church and the clans would come by and set it on fire up the cross in the middle of the where they were working and set it on fire. And they would run and put it out and use those crosses to build the altar in the church. I can say my grandfather also was a uh, Plumber, and he was a street car running right here in Jackson. <laughs> Do you know why your grandfather became a plumber? He did most of the plumbing on Wainwright Street to all the black community because 
where he worked, people would get tired of their, their uh, toilets and commodes, and they would tell him he could have them, and he would bring them to our house and put them in our backyard, and when he got a connection, he would put a toilet inside somebody's house and build a little room and make them a bathroom. We were one of the first ones to have inside toilet and uh, with a inside tub, and people would come over to see our tub. Oh, the water would run out of it, and you'd have to pack a tub. And fill it with water, and they would come over and see our tub. And uh, we thought that was the amazing thing. They would come to our house to see that. Um, um, what I did was I would take my toilet and put it in the tub, and then I would put the This is Mabel Devereaux. She graduated from Fredmore High School in 1954 as captain of the girls' basketball team at her school. She has been a part of the Denton Black community for the last 60 years, and today she is a part of the Denton Women's Interracial Fellowship. This is her story. I came from Palo Point, Texas, which is 20 miles east of Denton because that was kind of doing the integration time where people, we were not integrated. You know, when we integrated, everybody said, well, it's over, it's over. And I said to somebody, never, never. I don't care how much we integrate and how all things open. We are always going to have a problem. We have struggled all our life, and I feel that we're going to have to fight, keep fighting with God on our side. When you sit and look, I mean, we have not come to the place to where we're going to be completely free. There's prejudice all around because of the interracial fellowship was founded. We don't have very many problems here. And it's a bunch of black ladies and a bunch of white ladies got together. And that's how we become the interracial fellowship. And we still do meet. I enjoy school. I love school. I was a cheerleader. I've done so many things. I was in church when I on the weekends. I went to church. I worked in the church. I've done so many things in this community. Stay in school. Get your education. Fight for what you want and keep God on your side. And I declare if you keep God on your side, you're going to be a winner. So it kind of depends on, you know, how you get along with people and how, what kind of way, how you treat people. How you speak to people, how you talk to people, how you carry yourself. Be careful, because everybody's watching. And all I can do is say, and I'm going to still say it, and I'm ashamed to say it, hold on to God's unchanging hand. That's all I can tell you. Hi, is this uh, Phyllis Bruce? Yeah. I heard that you were um, you started the Ebony High Steppers. Could you tell me about that? Yeah. Yes. Um, during that time, I was um, I grew up in the South Texas Girls who were not able to be cheerleaders or uh, make dress or anything in the public schools so they were integrated. And um, I started a neighborhood girl team. I only started out with my girls, if I have three, and uh, two of their friends. And we were practicing in the street, and some little girls said, well, can we join you? And, and I said, yes. And so I ended up with about 15 at that time. Um, we didn't have uniforms. We didn't have any uniforms. I, I made black shirts and white blouses, and they marched in a parade or something. Uh, at that particular time, I, since they marched, I had more girls, I ended up with 30. So my neighbor and I made their uniforms, and we bought white tennis shoes, and we all got together and made pom-poms to go on their shoes, and we ended a Dirty Parade, and that parade we won uh, most attractive uh, and uh, 
most dedicated. We had we got two children, but it was all because I was a major in a black school, and I wanted my uh, girls to have fun. That's, that was the main thing: have fun, selfishly do something educational or fun. With a strange. I think the districts have changed because now it first it was uh, to be anything in, in a high school, being a, a person of color, it, it was like a popularity contest. And if you weren't popular with the group, then you didn't get it. But now, if that's what you want to do, and you have the skills, you can do it. I think that's, that's the change. How was uh, life before and after the civil rights movement. How did it change? Thank you. which is 20 miles east of Denton, because that was kind of doing the integration time where people, we were not integrated. When we got to the ninth grade, we had to come to Denton, because Denton was the only high school that was for the, where the black could go. But it was good. We had a good time. We had classes, and our principal and teachers and things were really, really good. We had a good football team. I was a cheerleader. I enjoyed school. I loved school. After I got started in the school, I joined the basketball team. One year, the tournament, we had to play in Bottom, Texas, and I never shall forget. We won the whole tournament. We didn't leave out of there around about 1.30 or 2 o'clock. And when we got on the other side of Whitesboro, which was coming to Denton, we did not know they had siphoned all the gas out of the bus. And it was around 2 o'clock or after in the morning. I think we were like maybe a couple of miles out from there. One of the boys got off the bus and went back and begged the man to give us some gas. And we got home around about maybe, I guess it must have been around 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. We need to work on a lot of things. There's prejudice all around. You know, when we integrated, everybody said, well, it's over, it's over. And I said to somebody, never, never. I don't care how much we integrate and how all things open, we're always going to have a problem. The only chance we have is to try to get an education. Stay in school, get your education. Fight for what you want and keep God on your side. <laughs> This is Reginald Thomas Logan. Dating all the way back to 1897, 
The Logan name has stood tall in the Denton community for many years. Bye bye, Bert. Bye bye, Bernie. There was a group of ladies that came out of all the churches here in Southeast And they met with the white parents in Denton. And they, they would meet, they met in one another's homes. Blacks would go to the whites' home and meet, and the whites would come to Southeast Denton and meet. Parents of some of the students, they knew one another. And that really helped with the transition. The integration of schools, which that started in September of 1965. And they did that prior to it. These were ladies that were actually in the churches. Fred Moore, of course, was outstanding in, in the work area of athletics. But of course, there were still some problems uh, with name calling. But once those guys got out there and started playing football, things slowly changed to the better. So the transition was what I heard after I left. When I came back, I could see a change in people's hearts. There wasn't any problem once I come back and visit from time to time. I graduated in 1961, and I started in 1958. When I when I began North Texas, I was married and living at home here in Denton, and I, sometimes I would walk to school, but I remember the prejudices that were afforded me while I was going. There were one of the classes I took had one more black in it, and it was an education course. And you know, when you look at prejudice, you have to really uh, be strong and you have to be positive. You have to realize what you need to do. You can't, you can't judge or you can't control what other people do. You understand that? That's a good lesson for you young people. You cannot control what other people do, but you can control the way you react to what other people do. And it makes a big difference. I guess the rest is history. Okay, my full name is Mabel Devereaux. We have not come to the preacher to where we gonna be completely free. free. You know, when we integrated, everybody said, "Well, it's over, it's over." And I said to somebody, "Never, never. I don't care how much we integrate and how all things go, we always gonna have a problem." Just because last week, I believe it was, I put all this stuff going on, the virus and things, and they hung up and took it off the TV. I was sitting there watching, and they said the racial problems have already started. But they took it off. You ain't heard no more about it. So we're not going to ever be free, as far as I'm concerned. I don't think we will. I don't think God intends for us to be. I really didn't. We have struggled all our life, and I feel that we're going to have to fight, keep fighting with God on our side. It kind of depends on, you know, how you get along with people and how, what kind of way, you, how you treat people, how you speak to people, how you talk to people, how you carry yourself. Be careful, because everybody's watching. And all I can do is say, and I'm going to still say it, and I'll change the say it, hold on to God's unchanging hand. All I can tell you. It was so wonderful to see you all. Really great. And I wish all of you at UNT um, a successful rest of your semester. And thank you for being a part of our, um, or thank you for inviting our class to join yours. Uh, thank you everybody for having us and for letting us into your classroom to teach y'all what we could. Oscar, my favorite movie is Spider-Man and superheroes. <laughs> my name is Ryan, my favorite movie is... Alright, alright, so I have the camera, and can anybody tell me what this button is? I'm, I'm pressing it. People don't know what it is. If you don't know what it is. What we're going to be going over is the name of the equipment that we are going to be using. 
said media literacy that day one when you can ask them who made this video what is who's the audience so we can embed it there so i think we kind of have media literacy we can be more explicit with it definitely christina um, for us we all have name tags what i was thinking is we can give like a or seven shot type we can do like a single thing where I want to show them that like, you need to stay Well, at least the ice cream is like last. Yeah. 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 But um, we need to figure out a way.